right, guys. Here's your extra credit assignment prompt uh, while Mr. Mitchell is off campus today. This is not the actual extra credit assignment. I want to show you how to solve it, and then I'm going to talk to you about what our aim is for today. So we have this question, and we're going to answer it before we get into the extra credit. Pierre Scotty Airlines currently directs their airplanes to ascend at a constant 11 degree angle of elevation until they pass a mountain range 15 miles away from the end of their runway. At its peak, the mountain range is 2.1 miles tall. Will the airplane's altitude be sufficient to make it over the mountain? So we have some pretty straightforward information here. Let's highlight it. Uh, we're going to be going up at an 11 degree of elevation. That, do, that angle from the second the wheels leave the ground until we get to the mountain range will not change at all. That is a constant 11 degrees. The mountain range is 15 miles away. And we have to pass over mountains that are 2.1 miles tall. We have three pieces of information and we know we're in topic eight, but this is really leading its, lending itself to drawing a triangle. Here, we're gonna represent this with our 2.1 miles. These are the mountains. We know the plane has to fly 15 miles to get to the mountains. And the airplane, we're gonna call that, we're gonna reference it with points P for plane, takes off at this point, and from this point to the mountain range at its base is 15 miles. And we just need to make sure our plane's gonna be more than 2.1 miles in the air by the time it reaches the mountain. So I'm gonna do our plane's path in a different color. And I want to point out one other thing here and I'm gonna highlight it in the same color. It says, will the airplane's altitude be sufficient to make it over the mountain, right? Obviously, the goal of every flight is to leave the ground and return to the ground safely and at the desired destination. What we need to know then is not, and this is not really what we need, we need this to evaluate our answer, to make a judgment call on whether or not our plane is safe. So what we really need to know here is X, or how high up in the arrow, how much has the plane ascended once it reaches these mountains. Um, think of mountains, right? They're jagged and they're maybe a cool blue. So we just wanna make sure that the height of the plane, or X, is greater than 2.1. So once we solve for X, the last step is to make sure x is greater than 2.1. And if we think about it, right, if x is 1.3, it's gonna crash right here. It didn't have enough clearance. If x is 200 miles, we had to take off at such a steep angle, we're gonna burn so much fuel, we probably won't be able to finish our flight as planned. So obviously someone at Pierre Scotty Airlines has determined that 11 degrees is good for fuel and they're saying it is safe, but we're a conscious, conscious consumer, and we're going to verify that this is going to work. Notice I haven't put in my 11 degrees angle of elevation, and that's just because I want to make sure we understand that this pink line is the flight's path. So once the plane lifts up off the ground, it's going to be traveling constant 11 degree angle of elevation. Now I'm recording this for Mr. Mitchell's class. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I identify what I need before I do anything else. Um, first, I know this is my reference angle, or the angle that I have to make my sine, cosine, and tangent determinations from. So I'm going to say the sine of P is equal to whatever the length of the side that is opposite of it divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of P is the adjacent side length divided by the length of the hypotenuse and the tangent of p equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side 
The reason I'm writing this out now is this is new to us and I want to make sure I see how each of these is structured. So once I do this next step, what I call the foolproof way to make sure we're not confusing opposite and adjacent, we can just go back and reference these three trigonometric functions and their ratios and we can just plug it in and do the algebra part fairly easily. What I always say in my class is always the first thing I do is identify the opposite side. It's the second easiest one to do, but I want to make sure that I'm at the right reference angle. I know that I'm looking at P because that's where the plane departs from the ground. So if I start at P and I draw a line straight across or right in between the two line segments that create this angle, I go straight across the whole triangle, that's going to land me on my opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this as my opposite of P. The next thing I always want to do is find my right angle because I know that the corner on my 90 degree marker points at my hypotenuse every time. Now you can see here that I'm not really asking you about the plane's flight path, the length of that or anything about it. The reason I'm still doing this is one, it's great practice to get into because there's only three things I need to know, opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. Here I've already identified opposite. Here I'm identifying the hypotenuse. Those are the two easiest ones. The confusion often comes when students are asked to find the adjacent at first. You're gonna get past this relatively quickly, but this method is foolproof in doing this. Because if you don't have a right triangle, you don't have a hypotenuse, and you don't have these trigonometric functions as of yet. We have some tricks we can do with them later on. Opposite's easy to identify because it just looks like it cut, well it does, it cuts right through the angles of the opposite side, and whatever is left over, is my adjacent. So now I'm going to look at which one of or which of these relationships have values. Well, I know my opposite and I know my adjacent. I can see opposite would be good for sine, but I don't know the hypotenuse and I really don't want to do the Pythagorean theorem here with this 2.1 squared. It's going to give me something nasty. I know I have no hope of a perfect square. So I'm going to hope one of these trig functions works for me before I get to that point. Here, I know the adjacent is 15 miles, but I have no idea what the hypotenuse is. And here, I know that the opposite is 2.1 and the adjacent is 15. So I know I'm going to, at a minimum, select tangent. But now we're going to go back and point out that this 2.1 is the top of the mountain. And we're not trying to aim or the top of the mountain, right? We don't want it to, we don't want to just barely hit the mountain just enough to destroy the plane and cause the chaos that would ensue. What our final step is to say, is X greater than 2.1? So this 2.1 is only necessary in the final step. We really want to know, is the plane going to be high enough after the 15 miles if we're going at 11 degrees? We need to solve for x because, as we already know, we just need to make sure x is greater than 2.1. To do that, we're going to go back to our algebra 1, and we recognize that this is in the denominator, and that's all I need to separate from the x to have my variable isolated. So to get rid of a denominator, I always just multiply by whatever's in the denominator. This is 15 times the tangent of 11. Keeping in mind, that tangent of 11 is just a number. Tangent is not a variable. I can't divide by tangent on both sides to free that 11. That is just a number. It's just an irrational number that we have to express in that way. Just like we use the symbol for pi or the square root of 2, they're irrational. This is how we write them. We're going to let the calculator handle that part. When I do this, this is going to be 15x over 15. This would just simplify to be that 15 times whatever the tangent of 11 is, is equal to x. So I'm going to pick up my trusty TI-30XA, my calculator that I can use on the EOC. I'm going to turn it on, and before I press any buttons, before I even think about how am I going to put this into the calculator, I'm going to make sure I'm in degrees. If I don't see DEG, right up top, a little bit to the left of that zero that's on my freshly turned on calculator, I'm not going to get the right answer here. 
the angle of elevation is 11 degrees. So my calculator needs to know that the value I'm inputting is considered is considering the angle of elevation in degrees. So now that I've confirmed it's in degrees, I'm going to start putting it in. But if for some reason on my TI-30XA it said RAD for radians or GRAD, I'm going to go to the very top of the calculator next to the second button. And there's a button that says DRG in all capitals. And I'm going to press that once or twice, depending on whether I'm in radians or GRAD, until I get back to degrees. Now that I've done that, I'm going to start putting this into the calculator, and I'm going to show you the best way to do it. Since tangent 11 is just a number, go ahead and do that in the calculator first. So what I'm going to do is press 11 so it's on my display. And then I'm going to hit the tangent button. I see that this is 15 times this number. So then I'm going to hit times. If I put a box around it, that's a physical key on the calculator. If it's just a number, you guys know how to punch it in. And then I'm going to put in 15. And then I'm going to hit equals. So here we go. 11 tangent times 15. And I get 2.91. Right now, this tells us we just have to be over 2.1. 2.9 is definitely greater than 2.1. So yeah, right now, Pierre Scotty is 100% safe for his airline. All right, now that we have an understanding of how to get this problem done just in general, here's where the challenge comes into play. And remember, you're doing this against your uh, Classmates, your goal is to get first place to get the maximum number of bonus points. There is a first, second, and third place prize, as well as a submission prize. So everyone gets something. This is also your participation for the day. So it's a two for one special, and then some people will be rewarded more handsomely than others. So the prompt for your extra credit, extra credit is: you are interviewed to be the next CFO of Pierre Scotty Airlines. Pierre Scotty, the CEO himself, has tasked you with maximizing fuel savings during the interview. Pierre Scotty has hired stunt pilots who are extremely skilled, and your job is to find the minimum angle of elevation that will allow the airplanes to pass over the mountain range while preserving the most fuel. The steeper the angle of elevation, the more fuel that is used. Therefore, your job again is to find the angle of elevation that is smaller or less than any other person being interviewed. Your classmates are the people that you're being interviewed against. So we're going to set this up again. It's the same situation. We have 15 miles before we get to the mountain. And we know the mountain is 2.1 miles. And we're not, well, let's just do that. So we still have 15 miles. We have 2.1 miles to overcome. And we still are going to trace out our plane in this pink color. And you just watched the other part of this. So you know that we're going to call this reference angle, the one that we're basing our decision off of, P. You know that this is our opposite side. You know this is our adjacent side. And you know that we're going to set this up with the tangent of something is equal to something. Here's where this problem differs. Your job is to find that angle of elevation, which I'm going to use theta as its placeholder, that will get us as close as possible to 2.1, but not equal to or less than 2.1. So we're not using 2.1 here. This is our measurement that we need to make a we need to evaluate to make sure we're safe. Whatever you tell me it is, it has to give me an X that is greater than 2.1. Your goal, or the winning number, will look like this. 2.101. That's a, that's a pretty good contender. Can you find an angle of elevation so that the tangent of theta is equal to X over 15. And now you're saying, Mr. Fimble, you have two variables there. This feels like a sham. We can't do that. Well, that's the thing. Your job is to say what value of theta
saves fuel and lives. Right? What is that minimum angle of elevation that this plane can go up at to just barely scrape by this mountain? 2.101 is a good entry. But it's greater than 2.1001. And I will tell you from my class when we did this, the winning number was 2.10000. It was 16 zeros. And then a one. Now, we all know that at that scale, at that size, we're talking about a grain of sand between the airplane and the top of the mountain. This is not an exercise in realistic fuel savings. If you guys know Pierre Scotty, you know that this was kind of set up to be fun spirited. The whole thing is how well can you manipulate your angle of elevation to arrive at the closest flight path to the top of that mountain? What I would do is go ahead and solve or rearrange this equation in black. Let me see if I can erase just this now that we don't need it. Perfect. Go ahead and manipulate this so that you have x is equal to something and you know what i'm not even going to make that part of the challenge because all you have to do is rewind the video i'd multiply both sides by 15. this is going to give me x is equal to 15 times the tangent of theta and this theta is what you're choosing to get as close as possible so let me pick a theta i'm going to say theta equals four so i'm going to pick up my ti 30xa turn it on confirm that it is in degrees, which it is. And since my theta is four, I'm gonna see if we're gonna make it over the mountain safely. So I'm gonna punch in four. I'm gonna hit the tangent button. And then I'm gonna hit times 15 and the equals button. <laughs> and I get 1.046. Is my and this is my x right is x greater than 2.1 no not at all 1.046 is not greater than 2.1 so if I go to I'm sitting in the interview Pierre Scotty looks at me he looks at the salary he's offering for this position all the benefits and he says the first thing you did was fly my first plane into the side of the mountain obviously you've lost any shot at securing this position. So you tell him, wait, 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 I wanna try again. I'm way under, maybe this time. I know it needs to now be between four and 11, right? It has to be less than 11, because we've already tried 11 and we were way over. And it needs to be greater than four because we just tried four and it didn't work. So I'm gonna do this and I'm just gonna keep playing with these inequalities. And this is the best way for right now, unless you guys know the trick, to maximize your fuel savings by comparing these. Now, you have 90 minutes in class to do this, and hopefully the same thing happens with you guys today that happens in my classes every year when we do this. One or two people really get into it, and then everyone starts trying to beat them. They start sharing how they're doing it, and eventually they start converging on, I mean, you're talking about one one hundred one one thousandths place or you know the hundredths place millionths but it gets really fun if you take it seriously and go for it so i will leave you with this final thing if i plug in my five here i'm going to do five tangent times 15 and that is only 1.3 so i know for a fact this five isn't going to work I'm gonna increase, but I only went to 1.3 from 1.0. So I know I've got a lot more to go because I have to get over 2.1. So I would jump up to an eight and try it from there. The ball is in your court. What I need you guys to submit on Google Classroom to me is simply this right here. Your answer will say, and you're gonna type it as a response, a private comment, or just submit a Word document. Theta is equal to 
And I'm not giving you, a, you know, if I said 11, then my x is equal to 2.9157046. Three, seven. Oh, my seven didn't show up. This is all I need on your document. I need to know what theta you had, and I needed to know what height of the plane it generated. Whoever's theta results in a plane height that is greater than 2.1, but also the smallest angle of elevation will win first place. Each block, block one gets a first place winner, Block four gets a first place winner, and we're going to do it that way. So you have two winners, two second place, two third place, and everyone that turns it in gets their participation points as well as some bonus points.